good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions for our guests, there are many ways you can contact the show. You can post a question on our wall on Facebook, Skype us, send us a tweet on Twitter to at The Organic View, or you can contact me directly at June Stoyer. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. One. On today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming back the true authority on aspartame, as well as many other artificial sweeteners, the Honorable Mary Nash Stoddard. We're going to discuss why aspartame is used in cold medicine, as well as many other products that most consumers are not aware of. So I would like to welcome back to the show, the Honorable Mary Nash Stoddard. Good afternoon, Mary, and welcome back to the show. Thank you, June. It's great to be here with you today. Mary, many of our listeners are so familiar with your work and all of your advocacy, but for some of our listeners that are first learning about you, could you just take a moment and share with our audience a little bit about your work? Yes. I founded the Aspartame Consumer Safety Network in 1987 based on a reaction I initially had and immediately following the death of my 42-year-old husband from a brain tumor. All of this was happening at the same time. Uh, Aspartame was coming on the market in beverages. It came on the market in 1982 as tabletop sweetener, but in beverages, we started drinking diet drinks with it uh, in 1985. So I became very ill. My doctor and I discovered the cause of the illness, and in my case, it was the sweetener. When I eliminated it, I pretty much got well. And so I, I thought, well, it's just me. I'm an oddball and an isolated case. So, June, I decided to let it go. And then I found out there were other people who had similar reactions, and some even, believe it or not, worse than mine, although mine was life-threatening blood disorder. Um, I, I really had to get with people who knew more about this, so I engaged a neuropharmacologist neighbor of mine to teach me, and with my doctor's help, we went to the medical school, Southwestern University Medical School in Dallas, Texas, and haunted the library there, the medical library, for months and years after so that we could really educate ourselves first before we needed to educate anybody else. That's how I got started. I then went on as as an award-winning journalist to investigate as an investigative reporter and actually gave testimony at the Senate hearing on aspartame safety in 1987. So I have about a three-decade history of working with this. I have kept studying and kept up with all the latest uh, news on aspartame so that now since 1992, I've been considered an expert witness on the sweetener, and now with Neotame on the market, I am also an expert witness on aspartame and Neotame both as artificial sweeteners that interfere with people's health and lives, and was actually on the market illegally in the first place because it did cause cancer in the lab animals in testing. So we say it was approved illegally. The tests were falsified and the FDA uh, will just say they didn't know, but it, it got pushed through. And so I am here to make people aware. I want people to read labels. I want them to think of this as a huge food safety issue. And we branched out into other food safety issues like GMOs and MSG and other 
things that are as dangerous almost as we consider aspartame. I do consider, June, aspartame to be the most dangerous thing in our food supply. And unfortunately, you know, today we have to prioritize our poisons. And unfortunately, I believe not. Just because it starts with the letter A, aspartame is the most dangerous thing in our food supplies. And more importantly, it's the most dangerous thing in our children's food supply. It affects the developing uh, neurological child's brain even more than it does the adults. And, and to say nothing about fetuses being affected because it quadruples on the side of the placenta. So um, it, there's so much to cover and so many things to be concerned about. Why is it even out there? Thank you. Can you explain to our audience exactly what some of these other artificial sweeteners are and where they can be found, whether it, it's in a food product or another consumer product? Well, let's start with aspartame. Aspartame is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And now it's being blended with other sweeteners like Splenda and uh, acesulfame K and other sweeteners like neotame and saccharin even, uh, even stevia, which is a good, healthy, natural sweetener that we do recommend. And so aspartame is, is getting out there. Neotame came on the market in 2001, I think. We've been fighting it since 1987 when we learned about it. It's the super version of aspartame. It's 13,000 times sweeter than sugar, if you can believe that. So neotame is based on the aspartame formula, but it has one very toxic substance added. It's called 3-dimethylbutyl. And when I looked up 3-dimethylbutyl in the 1990s when I first heard about it, I found it, guess where? On the EPA most toxic chemical list. The EPA was trying to protect people from this one chemical. And guess what? The FDA approved neotame without question. It's considered grass, generally recognized as safe, which aspartame was not in the beginning. So we have neotame sweetening cattle feed. For example, under the label Sweet Toast June, uh, neotame is found in cattle feed in India. And so it's, it's used instead of molasses, which is too expensive. And it's used not only to feed cattle, but other animals, I believe, that are consumed in our food supply today. And, and uh, maybe it's, it's used to wash and make fruit sweeter, like strawberries, for example. If you soak them in a sweet solution, you don't have to put it on the label. So reading labels isn't always the only protection. And we do want people to read labels, read the active ingredients, but also read the inactive ingredients, especially in your prescription and over-the-counter medications. Speaking of which, Mary, if you have a prescription for a cold medicine, for example, what can you do as a consumer to make sure that the prescription is filled with a medication that does not contain aspartame, neotame, or any of the other artificial sweeteners. Because I know for myself, that is a very big issue. I have immediate adverse reactions yes. to these, these chemicals. Yes, that is so important. It's critical. Everybody needs to understand this. And, and here's one thing you can do. Well, two things, actually. First, you work with your pharmacist. Pharmacists are our best friends in, in many cases, and they know more about medications uh, in a lot of cases than your physician. So work with your pharmacist. Tell your pharmacist that you do not want to take anything that contains phenylalanine. 
that's the code word for aspartame. Phenylalanine by law has to be on the label of active or inactive ingredients because PKU individuals are affected uh, adversely by phenylalanine. Other people are too, but just tell your pharmacist you do not want anything ever prescribed with phenylalanine in it. And if you have to call it an allergy, you have, because everybody's allergic to it. However, most pharmacists and most uh, physicians don't understand that. So you put it in terms that they can understand and forget about it. Um, also, tell your doctor you do not ever want an antibiotic or any other prescription medication prescribed for you or any member of your family that contains phenylalanine. Neotame and aspartame both contain phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is 50% of the aspartame molecule and in some cases it caused mental retardation. It, it causes a blockage of serotonin, the neurotransmitter that keeps our moods level and keeps uh, menstrual cycles uh, regular in, in females and so many other things serotonin is uh, controlling in our lives. So we don't want anything that blocks that particular neurotransmitter. I mean, forget about the aspartic acid, which is 40% of the molecule, and the methanol, which is 10% wood alcohol. So aspartame has so many different levels of toxicity and concern that it never should have gotten on the market in the first place. But now that it's here, we have to deal with it. And the FDA will not deal with it. We've met with them on many occasions, and they just won't do it. And somebody said one time, a, a doctor, a medical examiner in Brownwood, Texas, Dr. Hayes said, once the horse is out of the gate, uh, you don't put it back. He said, the FDA has its foot caught in a bucket and it can't get it out. So that's the way some doctors in Texas describe it. It's uh, unfortunately affecting the lives of people all around us in, in many different ways that you can see, but it's hidden. For example, pancreatic cancer was one of the four cancers in the lab animals when it was initially tested and submitted to the FDA cancer-free. So pancreatic cancer, think about it. It's epidemic now. We, we lost uh, a celebrity recently, just yesterday, Karen Black was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and Steve Jobs and so Michael Landon, so many others, um, Dirty Dancing Star Patrick Swayze. I mean, people are dying a pancreatic cancer, for example, if they had done the things I'm, I'm suggesting that your viewers do, and that is talk to your doctor, enter it into your medical record that you believe you might react to the artificial sweetener aspartame. Whether your doctor believes it or not, they have to enter it into your medical record so that you're on record as saying, I don't want anything with this sweetener in it. And so if by accident, God forbid, you do get it, then you are on record and your family will know whether, whether you're still around or not uh, to dispute it, that you're, you are on record entering this into medical records and, and your pharmacist records. So do that it's so important and especially with your children you know very often antibiotics are prescribed for children with earaches and and uh, coughs and that sort of thing and these antibiotics like cefzil i believe have aspartame as a sweetener in it and when i asked the fda when i met with them in the 90s in washington dc on a rare occasion, uh, we were able to meet with them. And I said, why do you allow it in children's medications, infants and children's? And they said, oh, because no other sweetener is homogeneous enough. Uh, you can't put sugar in it, it just won't mix. And so 
they have an answer for everything, but it's it's the wrong answer. And not that we know all there is to know about this. I mean, I'm learning things all the time that I didn't know after 30 years of, of being into this and being an expert witness on the topic. So if I'm still learning things, uh, how much more is the general public being deceived by this and not understanding fully? In fact, I keep getting frustrated because I keep hearing that regular sodas have sugar. You know, they have 16 teaspoons of sugar in them. Regular sodas don't have any sugar at all. They don't have one grain of sugar. Instead, they have GMOs. They have high fructose corn syrup, which is a huge thing that, that we're concerned about. We don't want GMOs anywhere. So when they're saying ban regular sodas uh, or limit the, the size of them in New York City, for example, we're saying it's not because they have sugar in them. In fact, diet sodas and regular sodas are both sugary sodas, if you want to call them that, because they taste sweet like sugar. So, you know, I'm, I'm here for truth in advertising and, and call it what it, it should be called. Thank you, Mary. Can you please share a recent story in which you had an issue with medication that you purchased and also what you did? Yes, it was pretty frustrating. I was doing what my doctor told me I should do, and that's to have a colonoscopy. And I went to purchase the laxative, you know, the cleansing medication that they make you drink gallons off prior to your procedure. And I saw what was an orange label product and I was taking it to the cashier and I started reading the ingredients and I looked and the inactive ingredient list had aspartame on it. Well, I said to my pharmacist, I am allergic to aspartame. I don't want anything with phenylalanine. He said, I'm sorry, that's all we have. Everybody who has a colonoscopy drinks this and it has aspartame in it. And I said, is there by any chance, like Metamucil, is there another form, a label, like a green label maybe? This was the orange label. He said, yeah, but we don't carry it. And it's, uh, you know, probably nobody else in town has it. I said, could you check and see? So he did. And the bottom line is, finally, after making a huge deal out of it, I mean, I did not want to take on an empty stomach all night long gallons of any substance with aspartame in it. Um, so anyway, I went to another pharmacy. They got it for me in the green label. Nobody understood why on earth I was making such a big deal about it, but they did it anyway. And so I want to tell people out there, if I'm still getting it by accident, almost, then you almost certainly are. So you need to read labels. You need to find out what your options are. You need to call the company. There's an 800 number on every OTC and prescription medication insert. And look and see, what is that 800 number? Why don't you call the company and say, is, is this sweetened with aspartame? I believe they they have to tell you by law because by law aspartame has to be on the label. So that's one thing. Be an informed consumer. Care enough about yourself and your family's health to ask about aspartame and neotame. Neotame is in, in things now that don't have to always be labeled. So call the 800 number. I, I tell people not to worry too much about reporting this to the FDA because they no longer take con consumer complaints. And if they're serious enough, they, in fact, turn them over to the company to write your doctor and ask about, as they did with my complaint. In fact, 
they offered my doctor and me a two-week paid vacation anywhere I wanted to go in the world if I would just be tested to see for sure if I was allergic to their product at the end of that fabulous two-week trip for two. I could have taken any family member or anything. So they they have ways of buying people off and and eliminating people who might have a serious concern with it. And so don't take no for an answer. Be your own FDA. Work with your doctor. Have it put in your medical files that you don't want anything that contains this sweetener. And begin to eat real food. Change your lifestyle. Remember, real food is what our body craves, not the artificial stuff. Artificial hearts and limbs and organs may work, but they're not what God intended. And so artificial sweeteners, I believe, affect us the same way. Our body rejects it at first, and then it accepts it reluctantly, but it does do damage. And in some cases, the damage is deadly and irreparable. Thank you. Recently, I noticed that artificial sweeteners are being used in oral hygiene products such as dental floss and mouthwash. What do you recommend that consumers do in order to not only avoid these types of products, but how can they take matters into their own hands? First of all, you have to stand there in the store, at the counter, the uh, where you're buying this, and read labels. You've got to look for the words contains phenylalanine, and there's always a warning on aspartame, either on the inactive or active ingredient list. Use your 800 number and call the company. Say, I want to protest aspartame being included in this product for my children and myself. And so make a big deal out of it. If everybody would do that, this stuff would be history. People keep this quiet. I, I, I say very often when I speak, I say, take this issue out of your closet. Don't keep it hidden. Talk about it. Say to your friends, hey, did you hear what aspartame is in and what it's doing to people? And as far as the dental hygiene products, uh, I, I talked to my dentist about it, and he said dentists use a lot of products with aspartame in it and, and give people sugar-free candy on the way out and, and recommend sugar-free gum, which all has aspartame in it. Even if it has sugar in it, it also has aspartame. I can guarantee you. So the dental floss, get the aspartame-free dental floss, you know, the unflavored. If you go with unflavored and either say, I don't care if it's sweet or not, you're usually better off. So make it part of your medical and pharmaceutical records that you don't want this and be a very careful label reader. Look for it in tooth whiteners. For example, tooth whiteners that, that whiten teeth are very often uh, sweetened so that people will, will not uh, reject those and, and will use them. But look and see what it's sweetened with. If you don't know and can't find it, your dentist will know. And the more we talk to our dentists and healthcare professionals, you know, the nurses in hospitals need to hear us say, if we have a loved one in the hospital, please don't bring anything with aspartame in it to this patient. Even then, you run the risk of uh, when my mother was in the hospital, we were adamant about no sugar-free stuff. And the minute she was out of surgery, they brought her sugar-free Jello and asked if she wanted some ice cream, and, and that was sugar-free. So, you know, please be an informed consumer and be the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Otherwise, uh, you may have to suffer the consequences as I did initially when I consumed it and became so very ill. You just don't want to risk brain tumors, pancreatic tumors, breast tumors, and the other tumor, I can't remember it now, but uh, that aspartame caused in the initial test. So please stay well, be healthy, eat real food, 
preferably USDA certified organic. You're not going to get in as much trouble if you do that. And I know it costs more, but so does medicine if you're unhealthy. And I spend my food, on, my money on food and not medication. Thank you, Mary. Well, one of the things that I found that works for me, especially when it comes to oral hygiene, is I always use the unflavored dental floss, number one. Number two, instead of using the mouthwash that is offered in at the dentist's office, I ask for a solution of hydrogen peroxide diluted with water. And uh, actually, my dentist was the one who recommended that I use the hydrogen peroxide instead of the mouthwash that's on the market. So I just wanted to share that with the listeners. Excellent advice. I think that's fantastic. And if people would do that. It's cheaper, too. Oh, much cheaper. It may not taste as good, but who cares? I've eliminated, actually, sugar from my diet, as well as the artificial sweeteners. I drink coffee black. I drink tea unsweetened. And I feel like I'm doing something healthier for myself by doing that. And you may not like it in the beginning. I didn't like those things unsweetened. But if you get used to it, your body will thank you. I can just assure you that'll happen. Thank you so much. Mary, it has been a pleasure having you back on the show. How can people keep in touch with you and follow up on your latest work? I'd love for them to visit my blog. It's called Stoddard's POV, S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D apostrophe S, P-O-V. I'm Mary Stodd, M-A-R-Y-S-T-O-D on Twitter. And I also am Mary Stodd at airmail.net on email. So please do keep in touch. I want to talk to you if you have questions. I, we're almost the court of last resort. You can't turn to the FDA. There are very few people you can turn to who aren't selling a lot of other products or services and things, and, and we're not. So please get in touch with me if you've had a reaction and, and want to share, or if you have a question and, and you have children and want to know what children's products it in, it's in. We have a lot of medication lists and things that we can email you, okay? Thank you so much, Mary. And folks, thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone. <laughs>